A quick hello and we're good to go. Welcome to the show, Dave Davis. <laughs> How are you, Jason? I'm all right, thank you very much. As you can hear, it's very echoey in here. It sounds like I'm in my bathroom. Uh, but actually, I went to the south of France and I'm trying to run this uh, webinar from my, or this interview from my phone, which is an interesting experience. Um, welcome, welcome, welcome. Lovely to see you again. Um, I usually start off each show with a little analysis of the person's brand SERP, uh, but for you, there's absolutely no point. Uh, I mean, it's Dave Davis, the King's guitarist, more of Dave Davis, the King's guitarist. I got to page eight and I got bored of looking uh, on Google. Uh, so I actually had a look here. Here we go. Sorry. I looked in LinkedIn and we've got like 100 pages of 25 David Davises each. <laughs> and then LinkedIn gives up trying to count. That, yeah. That's the size of problem you have with a name as common as Dave Davis. And I was thinking this afternoon, what's the solution? Um, I mean, there, there, there really isn't one. Dave Davis, the King's guitarist, is always going to trump you because that's what people are interested in. Yeah. Uh, and then I thought, maybe you've got a middle name and we could, we could have Dave Darren Davis, so it would be D.D. Davis. That would be really cool, wouldn't it? Yeah, no, that's that's true. However, uh, my middle name's just just Richard. Um, so, and, oh. and if I if I go with with the sort of as I learned as as a child, because other kids are really mean, um, is that DRD or yeah, DRD is is dirty, right? Like that's that's awesome. So that that was great. So I, I kind of like jettisoned on that one. Can, uh, can I can I can I point out that you're now in a community where people aren't quite that childish anymore? Like, once and, you get past eight. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness, and, and thus I can I can talk about it. I'm over the trauma. No, I... <laughs> <laughs> brilliant stuff. So I mean, the the idea of, of of Dave Davis. I mean, trying to optimize for that is fairly pointless. But I do know you started off. You you had a company called Beanstalk, mm -hmm. and I don't see the relationship. I mean, now I know you're called Richard. I thought it might have been Dave Jack Davis, and then you called your company Beanstalk. <laughs> Doesn't make sense. And you rebranded it as Uhu. Uhu it sounds yeah. like a, a, a Canadian lumberjack's kind of siren song to his his new girlfriend across the <laughs> the, the forest. Where does it come from? Um, you know what? I, I'm not really I'm not really sure. Um, the the original, like the beanstalk, that one was was easy. Um, Mary and I, uh, who you know, my my wife and, and business partner, were were just walking through Times Square, and it was about one in the morning or or something like that. And up the side of, it was an ING building, um, up the side of it was this giant beanstalk and the cloud cover was so low, it was going up, it was a big plaster one, up into the clouds. And we, we were talking about starting a company that night and Mary just turned and went, beanstalk. And that was it. Like, it was just, yeah, great, went with that. And you didn't climb it. We did not climb it. No, 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 hadn't had enough drinks for that. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant stuff. How lovely. And so now, Uhulu, how do you say it? Ulu, um, Ulu. Oh, right. and and yeah, it, it's it, which will make a lot more sense. Like once it's fully fully rolled out with uh, with logos and and stuff like that, it'll be a lot a lot clearer to uh, to to get. Although to your point, we've had to buy a bunch of different domain names to just go. Okay, redirect all like, all of them in in into one. Uh, but you know what, we we had to do that with with Beanstalk as well because there's Beanstalk. And then we have Beanstalk was already taken, just the words. We had to go with Beanstalk, the letter I, letter M, Beanstalk I am. Well, when I just say it, Beanstalk I am. So I've now had to buy Beanstalk I A M, just in case people spell that right, change all the emails to that. Just like, <laughs> so it, it, like, it's, you know. But I mean, and that's, that's kind of a whole lesson in, in naming a company. I mean, now we're looking at brand terms, which is my thing, the, yeah. the non ambiguity of a domain name, or sorry, domain name, a brand name that allows you to have a domain name that's very simple that people can just come to, and a, a name that people will type into Google and get it right when they actually type it. It makes your life so much easier. But then you took my course for yes. brand serps and yeah. rebranded, did a brilliant job. In about a month, you've got the whole thing uh, owned and organized and controlled yeah yeah and that was it, it was interesting because i was using that while while taking your courses and i was just sort of going okay well this is like a thing right like i can just i can sort of test here i've been testing it on other uh you know sort of client specific case scenarios as well um and i've actually been advising clients like i've got one client where we're merging two domains and i'm like okay well we're about to lose a brand sir because we have two right of our own okay now we oh, need right. to start looking at position 11 and 12 and assume that 
we're about to they're about to jump so I, i've been taking a lot of those lessons and just cascading them so for any listeners um i'm going to highly recommend uh the the, the courses by jason they, they are super useful like they're 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 really good and um one of the things i like and it, you know the, the same can be said about about a lot of a lot of things not in the brand surf space you kind of own that one and then you're the best resource for these things that's not just sucking up that's You're just right. like you just happen to be um yeah, that's that's just a fact and then the people watching this right now are probably well acquainted with the fact that's why they're here they know you right so um but you you, you catch these sorts of things from from a lot of sources now i i going back like not the sort of things you're teaching but you know you go to a conference and you pick up different things it's not brand cert necessarily it's it's related to different things and what i found with with your courses like because a lot of people are probably like oh, but i can just read jason and i don't have to pay for something yeah just do the time you're going to save <laughs> like just 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 pay the tithe because the time you're going to save just getting to the bones and or and the meat of things is yeah no that, that that's really interesting uh, uh, anasio who will remain name re remain nameless uh, said to me a year and a half i don't need you i can do it all i know it all and you're going yeah you do you know all these techniques but i mean he does and that's fair dues but you don't know it in this specific context and you're going to waste a lot of time and a year later he came back and said you're right yeah i wasted loads of time uh, that I could easily have saved. Um, but talking of which, I've actually updated the CaliCube tool um, to show this, which is a, a SERP, and I've tried to schematize it so it's really easy to digest and see what rich elements you've got on there, which brand uh, SERP features, uh, and then put the little icons there. This is Yoast, um, mm -hmm. who I'm now working with on their brand SERP. Uh, they've realized how important it is. So I'm working with them, and I'm beginning to think, if you look at the bottom, it's not 2021, the year of the SERP. It's the year of the brand SERP. Um, but I'm actually more interested today. Obviously, I'm going to push that all, all the time. I've got every episode. Today, we're talking about just the SERP. Now, you're saying 2021 particularly is the year of the SERP, and I don't see why. 22 years I've been in this, and I've, you know, we've had all sorts of SERPs. Why 2021 more than any other year? <clears throat> um, I am seeing an, an acceleration um, in changes beyond. It's always been pretty pretty fast. Um, you know, the, the speed with which things are changing, but um, I'm seeing an, an, an acceleration. Um, so I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, here's a, a quick, a quick list I put together just right before this, because I want it to be absolutely timely. But you seem to have uh, written on the ceiling. I, I've got a monitor that's up. <laughs> that's about the one I look at here. Um, so we, we had um, Google guaranteed badge displaying on local and map results. Um, local maps um, roll out with X year in business labels. Um, add a messaging button to Google Posts, displaying hotel review rating averages and other attributes. Testing address numbers on the map. Local suggest adding an edit placement um, move on mobile. Um, podcast carousel updated, as you know. You, I actually saw you, you'd release that news. Uh, updated with larger graphics. Um, a half line break in the search results. Page experience and core web vitals icon appearing in search, local reviews testing a new label, like a new review label, um, a new look for question and answers, carousel, search testing, um, a taller shopping ads, landmark icons and pins rolling out. It's a couple years old, but it's rolling out to, to 80 cities and, and a lot more coming soon. Testing thinner knowledge panels, another news story that, that you, uh, you know, sort of found first. Um, Google testing expanded descriptions and snippets, so you can expand the description tag. A new local pack user interface buttons, so they're going round instead of square. Um, the local listings adding web search results as, as, and some fun ones. Um, you can now try on makeup, um, like lipstick and eyeshadow, right in the search results. Um, they're testing streamed 3D content, including cars, so you can like 3D place the car, do a bunch of different stuff. And then just today, as, as of this recording, the, the local panel ads, um, actually adding ads into the local panel um, being expanded into lawyers. So for those not keeping count, that's 20 changes. That's in the last 30 days. That's search result changes in the last 30 days. That really? Whole list. Oh, that yeah. whole list is just 30 days? That whole list happened in the last 30 days. Oh, um, that, 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 is, that is very impressive. And, and, and kind of I've been saying, you know, Google has become more and more multimedia. And the list you've just been giving me at the end there, we had lots of true multimedia. I mean, I was saying multimedia yeah. in the widest sense. And people were saying, you know, it's not really multimedia. And I was saying, well, let's just use it in the widest sense because that's where we're going. Um, and the, the car thingy and the makeup thingy, I mean, I obviously need the makeup. I don't need the car. <laughs> um, but did you think do you think that's going to be more alive? Basically, you'll be able to do everything on the certain no need to visit the sites anymore. 
that's that's right. Um, and I had actually um, posted on Twitter um, when the when the car. Uh, like I, I read about the the car, the 3D, and, and it's more more than just cars that, that I'm thinking about for this. Like to be able to pull 3D modeling out of the cloud um, and and pull all the different skins and all the different colors and like place it in. It's more. It's not just about cars, right? You know that. I know that. That's a big investment for cars. Yeah. Like clearly, they're not going to do that. So we we have to extrapolate where is this going, and that's where my my 2021 statement comes from. Is it's not just about the things I've listed. That's like and and the acceleration in testing, and some of those are just tests and may never roll out fully. Some of them mm -hmm. are, are are deploying more fully, and they they've been in other areas before. But um, you know, with the with the rapid deployment. Um, we, we can see the writing on the wall, and and I shared um, the, the the news yesterday, um, as as of this recording anyway, um, in, in regards to the the three D modeling and 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 you know the the cloud based system, with basically it's about to get crazy, and John Mueller liked it, right? So you're like, oh, okay, yeah, and that's just like, and that's not like John Mueller liked my thing. It's no, okay, somebody at Google went, okay, yeah, it. it I, I can sort of like this. He's not going to say anything. It's not like I can yeah. call up John and he's going to go, and here's what we mean by that. But he, he obviously knows stuff that, that's going on in there. So I think what is going to happen, and it is think, I mean, I'm, I'm guessing like everybody else, um, that we're, we're about to see a rapid, rapid shift. And sometimes I, I do wonder, am I going to feel a little bit of like your friend and mine, Cindy Crum, um, who back, I don't know, it was like, 2008 2009 or something i was watching her at smx and she's like this is a year of mobile well it wasn't right and but, but she kept trying and eventually when she was right she was really really right right like she was prepped well ahead so I, that's like not a, even a dig at her she should have been right we should have been more on the game but users just didn't follow the technology right. as, as quickly they didn't adopt as quickly mainly because people like us not not you and I specifically were SEOs, but web developers weren't making the experience one that my dad wanted, right? Like yeah, I mean, well, I mean, if, if we look, if we take that, I'm mean, going to come come back a step, maybe. Um, obviously, you're you're talking about all the exciting stuff, and we all love to talk about that. But I mean, more more pragmatically, you kind of we're we're already in a cert which is much too rich for most marketers and most brands. Uh, most marketers and most brands, sorry to generalize, but aren't making the most of these opportunities that are video, that are images, that are people also ask. Um, recently, I wrote an article for Search Engine Land where people also ask is now appearing in knowledge panels, which I'm calling entity statements because they're not questions, they're statements like pricing, mission statement. And brands aren't even answering those questions that are closest to the brand. Um, so right now, we've got a situation where Google's moving forward faster and faster and faster and faster, and brands and marketers are simply not keeping up. Yeah, well, 100%. And that's our responsibility. Like, we're dropping the ball there. I mean, you... you, you absolutely are, are, are well tuned into this area right because you're you're a, a brand surf genius um and, and we're talking just, in, just, in one, just one thing sorry what well, one thing about brand serps just just to interrupt and then i'll let you carry on is yeah. um what's happened for me personally is since i've really been focusing on it the last two or three years i mean i've been doing it for seven years but i was mostly doing it for myself is I've realized that the importance of these rich elements has become very, very clear to me. And that by working on my own brand SERP and brand SERPs for my clients, it's actually improved the overall content strategy and improved their presence in all these other rich, ele rich elements on other SERPs, on the wider SERPs. Um, and it's been this really nice springboard because you're forced to focus on these rich elements, whether you like it or not. Well, it, I, you know what? I, I, I have to agree with you. I mean, obviously, um, like I, I have to agree with you that one in having taken the course, um, the, like your your courses and I mean, just knowledge of knowledge panels, um, you know, and, and how they function. They are the sort of cornerstone. I mean, you, you know, I'm a big fan of entities and they are the sort of cornerstone of, a, of an entity calculation. Uh, you, you are actually the reason we we initially started talking is because I stole one of your titles for one of my talks uh, because because it was such a good title I can't remember what it was now but it was such a brilliant title that I can't remember a couple of years later but you were the king of entities for me that not the duke of URL the the king of entities and and you really got me thinking about it and I do thank you enormously for that I mean the whole thing about knowledge panels is it represents your entity and it means Google's got a good grip of your entity and once it's done that it can start building people also ask around your brand and push it out to the topic layer and ask questions and or answer questions and using your brand as that push you into discover it, I mean it, 
we're in a, a world where being understood as an entity is the only single, I mean, it's the fundamentally most important thing in the entire strategy. And your yeah. article I read was like four years ago? Yeah, about that. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, the, the, the thing is, one, one thing that, well, and I, I verified this this multiple times. I mean, and entities are, are a big, like I, I love them, but, um, and, and Andrea um, Volpini, your, your friend of mine, he, I mean, he's, 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 he's got those down. He's got some really, really, really fun. So I, I mentioned that for, for our people watching, look up, uh, follow him on Twitter. He, he's got some some really, really, yeah. uh, really, really fun stuff there. But one of the things I found was we overthink things a lot. Um, and, and I think sometimes, like I'm a, I'm a technical SEO primarily, like I do a bunch of other stuff. But when I think SEO, my brain tunes in on, on sort of how entities function and, and, and things like that. Um, so one of the, the sort of things that I found while I was researching, and I, it was probably the article you were you were writing was, I use Dave Davies, not me, the other guy, um, as, as my example in, in things. And so I came up with, I actually used a picture Google has in their patents on entities and how the nodes and edges, you know, all, all connect and stuff. And I overlaid it, but I put in um, Dave Davies as, as the center. And then I just dropped, and I did this on purpose, I just dropped nodes and edges. So Ray Davies, the, the edge between those two nodes being brother, right? Like, you know, and, and, and also in the band, you know, just basically I created this thing and went, okay, now I'm going to see if I'm, if I'm right. And then I went over to the knowledge graph and every piece of those nodes was something that was in the knowledge graph, right? It was just, it was in there. It was right, right on the right hand side. Every fact I had thought to put in there was in there now it's not that i'm brilliant it's that google is right that google went what are the first 10 things that you're going to think of when you think of dave davies right birthday band oh right like mine was, mine was entity canada victoria and mary <laughs> see and you should that's how it should be <laughs> <laughs> that's all about context as well i mean i actually look your name up in canada and, and you do come up much higher up in canada right. and absolutely no way to in the uk which is logical um but sorry um back to back to serps because i really want to keep this on serps because we could do a whole other episode yeah. on, on on entities i mean coming back to that point is a lot of brands aren't even making videos. They're still pumping out blog posts, which are aiming for those blue links, aiming to compete with pages that have existed for 10 years that already have a boatload of links and competing for less and less space and place and less and less interest from the user. Um, how, how can they start to pivot so that they're not stuck in that rut? Yeah, I mean, and that that is hard because we all get stuck in those ruts, right? Like we all do what we do because we it's worked. But we have to remember that it's work is a past tense and it always is. And sometimes it's continuing to work in the present and under evaluation, it might work in the future. But just because it did doesn't mean it does. I mean, when I think of the strategies I was using when I started Beanstalk in 2004, they don't work anymore and they shouldn't because I made the search results bad. <laughs> like Just the way things were, but you had to, right? Like it was about keyword density and things like that, right? Like you had to hit 3.5% density. You can't really write super smooth. Like when you're when you're targeting a percentage like that, but we had to do that. But what we're dealing with here in in a, in a search layout, I mean, there's there's a bunch of different angles we can go. But is a like as we saw, there's 20 different changes that have just happened. We need to watch so closely what's happening in our space, and then take advantage of everything that we can. Right? Like we we think of Google as this 10 blue links, well, or like 8.4 on average, or whatever the, the current number is. But you know. It, it's not anymore, right? And, and you are well aware of this. It's the yeah. right hand okay. side. It's the people also ask. It's <laughs> flashing that up because I, I, I mean, my my ex wife did the the illustrations, but I really like the way we've managed to schematize it and make it really obvious, kind of what's appearing where, without getting too stuck in the details. And those blue links, when you look at that, have pretty much disappeared from from my perception as a user. Well, and why would they be there? Like, how often is it that that's what I'm looking for? Because I'm not. I'm looking for an answer to my question. I'm not looking mm -hmm. for a website. I'm looking for an answer. So if Google can fast track me to that answer, it's going to be better. Now, one of the big weaknesses that I that I see in Google as of right now, um, and it, I mean a weakness in like a, you're still the strongest, right? <laughs> but um, a, a bit of a weakness is they haven't really nailed personalization. In, in the way that I would like to see personalization. And what I mean by that is I hate video. Like I just personally, when I'm looking for a tutorial, 
I'm generally looking well, for a point. You're in exactly the wrong place right now. Then. <laughs> well, these kind are great because I'll watch them just while I'm like sitting there and I've watched yours and the, like, I'll just like leave them up. I've got a few monitors. I leave it up on one. I leave it playing while I'm working on other stuff. But I mean, when I'm looking for a solution, I'm having a problem with a WordPress install. I do not want video as my answer. <sighs> I just can, don't. Yeah, I, I, no, I agree. I mean, the, the thing is, and the people who start off the explanation is with this incredibly long introduction to kind of what, how they got to that point right. of like a minute and a half, and you're just going, I just get to the answer. And I think we're all like that, uh, but we all make that mistake of thinking everybody's interested in my story of how, how I got there. And in fact, they're just interested in the solution. Well, that's it. But my kids are. They're more yeah. interested in video. They digest a lot faster with, with video than 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 I do. I don't. I'm looking for code snippets. I'm, my eyes can scan quickly in an article. Like Just the format I tend to prefer things in. Not always. When I wanted to learn to tie a bow tie, I wanted a video, right? Like Because that is something that is, that is very visual. Um, but once things fine tune a little bit more on Google's end, and they will, um, once they fine tune a little bit more, I think they'll be able to understand a lot more. If it's a technical question, don't even bother giving Dave a video. Or like just just don't he will never click on one like ever unless he has exhausted everything else on the page <laughs> like he's exhausted the ads he's exhausted everything to help him solve this problem now he'll he'll go to video uh, which, but for the which, way, which partially plays in time now i made a point i mean i described to nagar raganandan from uh, bing about the topic layers and suggesting that perhaps what would be happening is that if I was learning to play the piano, I would start off looking for beginner's lessons and Google would understand or Bing over right. time that I was getting better and better and would present me with better results, assuming I can actually learn the piano. Um, and he, I, I mean, he basically said, well, that's a good idea, but that's definitely not what Bing at least is doing. And then I was talking to Jez Schultz the other day and she went, ah, yes, but that's what Google are doing. Um, right. So, uh, and, and and that idea of a topic layer comes down to personalization and what you're suggesting is Google are just not up to it right now. Yeah, I don't think they're up to it and I don't think they're they're clustering quite as well as, as I will hope they will. And again, I, I understand these are incredibly sophisticated systems with a lot going on. I don't begrudge them this, but it's something I am looking to go. It is a logical extension of what's going on right now. It, it is logical to assume, especially with the the massive differences in the way different people and different generations digest content to go, okay, I know Dave's a Gen X, right? Like, and people in Gen X who are like techs tend to digest information in this way, right? Like they, they, it just isn't like sort of a natural extension. And they have tried this in some capacities in the past, but what makes it really, they're failing now, I, I think failing. They're not doing it as well as they, they could or as well as they will, but what makes it really exciting for me in the context of our conversation right now in the service is once they do fine tune that a little bit, and I do think we're, we're heading in like, machine learning has kind of blown up over the last couple of years. And that's what it's gonna take to really make this work. You can't just go, Okay, we know Dave's, you know, 47 years old and and he likes nerd stuff. So this is the format. It doesn't work that way. You need to be able to use machine learning systems to go, okay, Dave fits this persona. This persona tends to do this, right? Like we Yeah, you know, and, 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 I mean and the idea, I mean the machine needs to build up these personas that wouldn't be personas in the way that we understand right. them. Um and, and the machine and but, but the, what the machine is missing probably from Google at the moment which they have within Facebook is really detailed data that, that allows the machine to build that picture of the person. With right. Facebook, we're giving away so many personal pieces of information that the machine's finding it, in inverted commas, relatively easy to build these personas. And Google, it's such a, uh, a fragmented chunk of data that, that Google's presumably having a lot of trouble actually pinning, or the machines are having trouble right. pinning these different aspects and attributes and, and preferences. And uh, one more thing is, Cody, to push that a little bit back into my domain is not only Google saying Dave Davis doesn't want videos, but when Jason Barnard searches for Dave Davis, I'm interested in this Dave Davis. Right, right. Um, but what and what makes this in in my mind really exciting for 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 right now it, as it relates to search layouts, um, like like search pages. Oh, I'm sorry, I, excuse me. I, I forgot to say it. I love the term search layout. So I talk about the anatomy of the SERP. Uh, SERP layouts. I mean, we're talking about design. It's not 10 blue links. And once we've got that in our brains, if we start saying SERP layouts or anatomy of the SERP, it immediately stops us thinking 10 blue links. Right. Yeah, you're right. It does. Um, and it's important. It's an important distinction because so many queries that I enter, I don't even get to the links. 
right? Like I've, I, I, I've selected before I've ever gotten to those 10 blue links, right? the, the, the traditional blue links, which is funny because I would have viewed that as a horror show back a few years ago, right? I've been gone, then I don't have a job. Yes, I do. It's that I've had to adjust the way my job is much to, to I think the, the point of this sort of segment or, or sort of aspect of the, of the conversation here is, yes, I want personalization to cascade. It will make what they're doing more powerful. But what we have the opportunity to do is go, okay, I'm going to imagine what my persona is or do some research and, and figure it out. And it'll, it'll be different in travel than it is in, in tech, which will be different than in power sports. I, I don't know, whatever you're doing. Um, but who is the persona of people clicking video, right? Who is that in your industry? Who does this? Okay. Then those are who your videos are for. Your videos aren't for Dave's grandma, right? Your videos are for Dave's kid, right? So make your videos for that. Instagram is for this and it's showing up for your brand search, right? Like all of these things still catering to the audience. And I've seen that go horribly, horribly wrong. And I, but I just did a proposal for a company where I'm like, you're done. Like I cannot possibly assist you in this area because that's the area they were looking at. Ironically, brand search, um, in, in an industry we know well, and they were just, they just wanted some tune ups on their social profiles and this and that. And I'm like, you're, 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 treating Instagram different than Facebook, different than LinkedIn, and you're actually hitting the persona of who's there. Now, I can't really judge the content, you're doing power sports and votes, right? Like, but they were catering Instagram to like, okay, we're, we're gonna show you like flashy boats because we know you're gonna be like 17, 18, your parents are buying the boat and you wanna make this look like, here's you with like these other sexy people around you, right? Like, and off you go. Now you move over to like LinkedIn and you move over to you know the the other profiles who were part of their brand surf and it's but more about pricing it's like oh, okay now you got the parents who are actually having to buy a boat right like now let's let's cater to them and, and so they did they did that well but this is something we need to remember when we're looking at the searches it's not just about what's dave seeing when he gets there i mean not that that you know your your audience is targeting dave but maybe the other dave davies if they're if they're selling you know <laughs> drums or something um <laughs> or, or what but you know, whenever somebody's searching, you can't just go, oh, okay, I care what Dave sees all the way down the page. No, my eye is going to be attracted to specific segments of that page. That's mm -hmm. why they have various different media types on a page. So what's your target audience and where's their eye going to go? And I think that's an opportunity we have while we wait for Google to fine tune and go, okay, we could ignore the crap we know Dave doesn't want to see, right? That's on page two. Right. Yeah. I mean, it means that I mean, brands really have to understand the personas that they're aiming at and where the, what what they're aiming at on which platforms, um, and that the, the the whole thing. I mean, from my point of view, I, I was a blue dog first, then an SEO, mm -hmm. uh, and now moving into digital marketing, or had moved through digital marketing as far as I can see into marketing. And now when I talk to companies, I'm saying oh, we're actually doing a marketing operation where we create all this content, we push it out to the platforms where our audience are currently hanging out in a format that they want to consume on that platform. And then we repurpose it on our own sites and package that for Google and Google is the bonus. <laughs> yeah, that's about right. Um, but <laughs> I think... <laughs> or am I, I pushing mean, it too far? No, I mean you're, 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 you've you've sort of nailed it. Like that is that is sort of what we what we do. Um, but what it boils down to is, are you doing it more creatively than the next person is? Right? Like you're you're right. This is what we sort of do. But am I doing it more creatively? Am I doing it in a better format? Right? There's we, we all remember the era five. I mean, maybe some of the audience doesn't, but the era of like infographics, just hammer them out, infographic, 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 everything was about infographics and they worked really well for, for like a little blip and then they died. But there are sectors, I work a lot in the travel sector, people love them, right? Like, it, it, because it's an easy way to digest content for, for, for the varying segments of people that, that look at, at, at travel, right? So <laughs> these things still work. Uh, but, but sorry, what you just said, and it just struck me, is what we all do, and everybody in the universe does it. Universe, not just the world, the universe, even the little green monsters with the little <laughs> tentacles on their head. Um, we, get, we get caught in fads and we think, right, that's the solution to all my problems in infographics. Uh, before that, it was all, all my problems will be solved by a great blog article and it has to be skyscraper. And all, any question, if you ask me, like, you know, how, how to plug in a TV, I'll write you a skyscraper article about it. And you go, but I don't want one. I just want a short answer is what you were saying. And, and now it's video. It's this kind of panacea. And we're kind of going video, 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 video. And in fact, what you're saying is 
different formats are going to work for different circumstances, different people on, on different platforms. Well, that's like, I, I would personally, I mean, I let the data guide, but just as an example, often I would prefer to rank in number three with the right media format than in number two with the wrong, mm -hmm. right? Number one, I'll always take, but it, like regardless, right or wrong, because people will just autopilot click number one. But uh, if you're, if you're, captivating the the user's attention and imagination and serving them the right thing at the right time that's always better right so that's where our, our our layouts come in is not just can i have more than one spot because i can have a youtube i can have twitter and i can have an organic listing right but i can hit the user the way they want to be hit at the right at, at any given moment and to me that's that's the thing and what's my intent if i would click a video maybe a how to Whereas if we come into the shopping ads, well, then clearly I'm those. That's a shopping result. But then maybe I do want a skyscraper blog post on how do you pick the perfect television, right? Like maybe that's what what this is all about. Um, you yeah, know, I mean, I, but, but that we're looking at uh, ambiguity, and and I think the the layout or the anatomy of a SERP comes it comes into its glory when we're looking at these uh, terribly ambiguous terms like television. Uh, you, you can potentially have the place, the video for how to install a television. You can have the long form article about what the best television might be for different circumstances. And you can have the result for selling your television. So you're potentially aiming at three <laughs> places in one SERP with kind of the, the, the right content that will fulfill the role that Google is looking for yeah. to be able to address the ambiguity of that term of not being sure what the person is looking for. But isn't that something as well with the topic layer? Sorry, coming back to that, that over time, Google's going to end up just knowing the fact that I'm looking for a television. It knows so much about me that I'm looking for how to install the television because it knows I just bought one. Right. And, and that's, a, that's a great angle. And, and, and I hope they, they get there. And this is, you know, sort of another one of their shortcomings. And they keep trying, but I've hoped and thought, I, I actually was going through all our old blog posts just to pillage them for this rebranding we were talking about earlier and just going, okay, let's clean up all, all the past crap. And I was writing about personalization in like 2008 and had the hopes and dreams that we're talking about right now that they're still not doing, but their patents at the time were leading me to believe that that was sort of right around the corner. And it all seemed pretty simplistic to me that, that it could be done. Clearly... Yeah. I was a child who had no idea how complex these systems are when you're trying to deal with 7 billion erratic human beings doing different stuff, right? Like, but I, and I was doing it much more, you know, sort of, well, of course it's easy to do. No, you can't, right. it's, it's now I understand it's hard. So Cindy Crum was talking about mobile in 2008 has, and has turned out to be very, very right in 2020. Yes. You were talking about personalization in 2008. You're going to turn out to be very, very right in 2021 or 2022. Right. And, and hopefully, hope, hopefully, hopefully I will be. One of the things that I think we're really, really, really missing that, that is, is rolling out right now um, is the idea of, of Chrome and browsers as an extension of search like that chrome is an extent is an extension of my search layout um and, and we don't think of it necessarily that way um but i think we're about to have to think of it that way whether we like it or not and and i think passage indexing is going to be one of those things that carries it just one step forward when we look at, at, at passage indexing which is rolling out and it's funny i just did a query i've never seen a result like i'm, I'm seeing right now but anyway um <laughs> It's, I'm just like, okay, that's something to investigate. Maybe I'll share it with your with your audience after because I'm like, that doesn't look anything Brilliant. like anything I've seen before. But now we're um, already curious. You have to share. <laughs> um, but yeah, once I once I can uh, figure out what, what's doing it. But what? Oh, um, sorry, just for the for the audio audience, the podcast audience, we can't see his screen either. So we're just as frustrated as oh, anybody okay. who's only listening to the audio. The audio. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, audio audience, but you'll you'll find it on Twitter with with an explanation within the next probably twenty four hours. So, um, you know, if you check on the twenty third, twenty fourth on on Hulu and Twitter, um, but, I'll, I'll sorry, share my findings there. But circling back, if it. we go to passage indexing, right, which is which is 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 rolling out in the process, some point like it's by the end of the year, and I, I'm looking, going, I haven't heard an announcement. It's done. I haven't seen any evidence in the search results that it's done. Barry Schwartz hasn't gone. We're seeing a bunch of weird shakeups, so it's done. So we're not seeing that. But when we think of an ability of Google to now go, okay, you've just entered in a, a query, right? What is 
XYZ television, right? To go back to our, to our you know, conversation about televisions, um, you know, or, or what is the resolution? To be able to pull a piece from a different point, you know, might be from a full review of 20 different televisions and it's just pulling this one segment because that's the segment in, in the passage that it's viewing as the best answer to that question and then surfacing it. Do you think they're just gonna land them at the home page, like at, at just the, the top of the page for that page? No, of course they're not. That might be item number 17. So that's where I think we're gonna really see, and I'm betting this is happening in 2021, where um, we'll see a, a, a scenario where Chrome will then go, okay, they it ranked for this, Google has changed the, the, the title and description on the fly to go, we need to reflect the H2 tag of that you know, specific television or whatnot. Yeah. But when I land, do I think they're gonna do something clunky like they do with featured snippets and just scroll me down? No, I, I'll bet, I would bet that by the end of 2021, we're gonna see light boxes. That's just my, my bet that we will see a light box generated by the browser to go, okay, here's that snippet. Now you can click the X and view the whole page, but rather than having to scroll me down, just go, here's the answer, okay. close that. Now in you go, there's the whole page on all 20 televisions, but they're giving me a fast track to it. No, 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 wonderful. I mean, a couple of things that spring to mind from, from Gary Vias, in fact, I, I was watching him somewhere, I can't remember where it was, and he was saying actually, in terms of at least passive, I mean, you can look at a page or the way Google looks at a page now and think of it as a folder. It's a folder with lots of bits in it. And, and the, the algorithm will be able to pull out any bit it wants to. And that's that's an analogy that's really useful, been very useful for me, for getting a grip on how passage indexing might actually be working. Um, and the idea that it's a folder rather than a page uh, makes it makes a lot of sense to me. Um, and the other thing is a year and a half ago when we were talking about the featured snippet, um, and he told me he told me told me all about how the ranking algorithms work, um, Darwinism in search, which is my fave topic. Um, and I said to him, will we be seeing in feature snippets blue links that are not the meta title? And he said to me, don't hold your breath, not gonna happen anytime soon. And I'm betting, my bet this year then is gonna be that this passage indexing is the, you can stop holding your breath now and start breathing right. like a normal human being again, because we will be doing that in 2021. And they have to, right? Like if, if, if you're, only taking this passage of a page and ranking it and then trying to convince me in the search result that this is relevant to what I'm looking for. The title of the page may be irrelevant to that specific segment. Yeah, um, I mean, I, I, when I talked to him about it, I was just thinking this is, it's like you in 2008, I was thinking this is ridiculously simple. Uh, and obviously not. Um, I mean, obviously I'm as childish and, and innocent and naive as you are or were in 2008. Um, but I mean, I, th I think I think kind of the, the 2021 is going to be, I mean, are we not looking at a situation, last question, are we not looking at a situation where we need to create content, package it for Google as best we can, but because Google knows its users and it knows the circumstances of its users, the context of its users, and we don't, that we have to package our content and, and trust Google to do the best thing with it. Yeah, and that's, that's mm. my... my Short answer wants to be a yes, but that's the very googly kind of answer, right? Like we, yeah, we need I was, to I was, I was pretending to be John Mueller, actually. <laughs> um, I, quite honestly, what we're working with with clients on right right now is, and I hate that I'm doing it, but I'm prepping them for like, and we're going to have to remove part of this later, and I'm not sure which part um, is prepping for two paths. There's the one that I hope we take, and then there's the one that we're on the trajectory we're on right now, which is okay. I want to rank for what is rank rank, right? Like I'll just pick like a like a, an article that would be pretty easy to, to have, right? And go, oh, okay, I've got this chunk. Now, right now I would build a long page on, on that, right? I would have this this long 2000 word article on, on rank brain and, and what it is, because I want to rank for the query, what is rank brain? In future, the hope is that I would be able to segment out, actually this might be a bad example if, if I look it up, it might be like long form that's working better, but my hope is with with passage indexing that we'll be able to go okay i don't need to create 20 individual pages of content they're all inflated just to do keyword capture because as a user that frustrates me because i'm having to bounce yeah. all over the place so now enabling me to go okay here's one it might be three four thousand word article right like this 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 skyscraper going back in time but with google able to go okay we're just going to surface this for you now there's one piece of content where you can find out everything you want to know about google algorithms but here's the piece you're asking about now 
Now that might actually end up keeping you on the page. I think publishers who can follow this um, should over time with what Google is trying to do, get rewarded for this because they'll be able to show a lot more advertising on, on the pages. But we'll, we'll, we'll see. I don't know how, like it, I understand that's an incredibly complex thing to do. So right now we're sort of going, okay, we're gonna start creating this long form content, but at the same time, we need to stick with what we know works right now. Cause I don't know how long until Google can properly do yeah. what we need them to do. But I think well, that's, that's what they're trying to do. And I think they'll eventually succeed. Well, I suppose the problem that the, the, the clients we have, the people we're talking to is, you know, I mean, I'd love to believe you, but you know, who says you're right? I, I have to be sure about what's gonna happen in the future. Well, um, and so we're, we're kind of stuck with, with, I'm predicting that, but they're saying I need to do something that's solid and, and we'll bring results. Well, and they could rightfully turn to me and go, can you guarantee that's going to happen in the next three months? No. And then they would rightfully go, well, I need to economically survive long enough for that. <laughs> so, so yes, we'll start <laughs> prepping for it. That's great. We'll have the content ready for us when we get there. But I still need to be making money long enough. And I, as Dave, need that client to keep making money long enough that they can give me more later when the, the new strategy <laughs> starts working, right? Like we, we all need this to, to work. So. I view this more as a, as a longer term. I do think 2021, but we've still got a, there's a lot of money to be made between now and that. So, Which is brilliant. No, absolutely perfect, because that actually brings me on beautifully to next week's uh, Cali Cube Tuesdays with Stefan Spencer is how to find and how the right SEO, which is exactly the topic we ended with. So Dave, that was absolutely brilliant. I could talk to you for hours and hours and hours and hours and we could bounce around from topic to topic. I was trying to keep that one a little bit on topic. Um, absolutely awesome having you here. Um, I wanted to have you on the show for a while. I had Mary on the show a while ago mm -hmm. and you're now that's done and dusted. Put that to one side and you'll be back next year. I'm sure 2021, the year of the cert. A quick Sorry. goodbye to and the show. Thank you, Dave. Bye-bye, <laughs> man. Bye. -bye,